how can we do, I mean, what do you see? Because I'm calling on your, your background with supporting people mm-hmm. with disabilities to th- help us think mm. through. What do you think? I mean, having a role, what do, you, what do you think, how can we help people help less, too little or too much? I mean, and I think there's both. I think there's sometimes too little support given. Yes. Mm-hmm. But in ways that would be helpful and too much support or interference offered when, or boundaries set when it's not really appropriate. What, do, yeah. how, what's, you know, what are you feeling, thinking? What do you? So, no, so, so what, what I do normally and get for people living with disability that I work with, whether are they, you know, young children or they are teenager is that, I normally will sit down together with the person and the care partner. And then, okay, let's list out what are the things that he or she can still do. And then let's and and then what are the things he or she likes to do? Right? And then after that, uh, after that, uh, what does what skill does it take to be able to do the whatever task that the person enjoy doing it? And does he how much does he has? You know? So so in, in, in that way, you are able to know that, okay, like for example, I take myself, I, I, I like cooking. And when the, when the, when, when the uh, doctor suggests that, you know, ask my family member to have someone to cook for me, I say, oh my God, that is, cannot, that is my occupational role. I've been cooking all my life, you know? So, so no. Yeah. So for me, is that uh, I still want to cook. But then I know that I'm not able to cook like what I used to be able to have so many dishes and things like that. So I cut down the number of dishes that I do. Now I only cook two dishes, no dessert already, no soup, no nothing. Yeah. And then, uh, and, and because I told you I'm not good with uh, uh, putting things in sequence, so I will lay out like a choo-choo train like that. <laughs> so, yeah, so that is my way. And another thing is when coming to handling knife. I forgot, I will normally not able to remember that I'm handling knives. So I will just take up my chopping board and the knife few times cut myself. So, so then I will just sit down and, and, and because I'm still very, uh, uh, still very high functioning, I can do it by myself. But if, if let's say if I'm not that high functioning, I will need someone to do it together with me and my care partner and say, okay, now, she, she, you, know, you cannot stop somebody from doing something that they enjoy and they love doing. So what you do, what you need to care about the safety, about the knife and things like that. Let's find a way of how, how to help her to be more consciously remember. Then I found that if I cross my midline, you know, because uh-huh. I'm a right-hander, and then if I were to bring, and then I put my basket to put my knife on the left hand. So I cross my midline. So that is consciously got the visual and uh-huh. then the brain is also start to see, okay, there is a knife passing through and it's on the basket, which Your is on attention. the left. <laughs> yes. So so that so then it somehow it helped me and minimize the, the the risk. The incidence of yes, yeah. of I cut myself or the I pick up the whole chopping ball and the whole knife just drop down onto the floor. Yeah. So so that is what I, I felt that, you know, uh if people is willing to sit down and look into very fine details of what the person living with dementia likes to do, because that intrinsic motivation is very important, right? Yeah, and yeah. and then after that, you know, what are the person able to do and what are the skills that is required to, let's say, for cooking? You know? And then how much can the person can still do by himself or herself? And then what support can come in? Like for me now, I have eight timer for everything because I am very bad with the time gauge already. Yep. So even simple thing, I will need to have my egg timer. And 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 before that, much earlier, I think is a beginning of my uh, dementia. I can have my egg timer put anywhere I can remember. I can connect that, that egg timer. But oh. now I can I cannot. My egg timer had to put next to the thing that I'm measuring for the time. <laughs> so if I make bread. So the eight time more will be next to my, my bread door. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, because when you're going from place to place, uh, spatial orientation 
combined with temporal orientation. There's so many things between one thing and the other. It's like so many opportunities to get off task and you don't need to, but it's just tricky. So what your brain really, I mean, the gift, you and Bobby Redmond, both, both of you have this gift of having worked with people with disabilities, children or young adults or adults. Yes. And, and that's my background too. And so what it allows us to do is be very flexible in how we mm. approach helping because helping yourself or supporting someone else, because in that moment you recognize, okay, well, I need to know from you. I, I can't help until I'm really curious about what you do, what you have trouble doing, what you like doing, what you need to be able to do to live the way you want to live. So what's, and that's the one I'm going to add in. What do you need Mm. to be able to do in order to live the way you like? So what you did with cooking, I think would also apply to, let's say, taking a shower and getting your hair washed. Because what we're talking about is that that's an incredibly complex sequence of events that have to take place. Mm. And I mean, to get yourself cleaned up and dressed, it seems so simple. And yet it is highly complicated to go through all of that and end up where you want to be with everything being done in a timely manner, because it Mm. is so easy. I mean, you're at the sink, you're at the toilet, you're at the shower stall, you have all these products, you have this cloth, you have the soap, you have the shampoo. I mean, it's really very complicated. So if you want to live independently, you have to be able to manage body hygiene. I mean, it's just, it's one of those things. And so I think if we start off recognizing if I could say to someone, you know, okay, so if you're having trouble with the cooking of a meal because of sequencing, mm-hmm. I'm wondering, tell me a little bit about how you're doing with, you know, getting yourself showering and ba- doing your hair. And that shouldn't be an embarrassing question. I mean, it, it really should be. It makes sense to ask since, yes. you know, and hiding the answer is like, oh, I'm fine. It's like, okay. I mean, I'm, I'm really curious about how that would be fine. And yet you're having trouble with the French toast, but I mean, it's possible. It's all super fine. Or are you having to do the same kind of thing there that you do in the kitchen? Mm -hmm. It's just a question. I mean, I, I'm not accusing. I'm really curious and I have to stay curious. So I'm going to, if it's okay, I'm going to go ahead and ask, do you have any ways? I mean, have you had to modify how you do, getting shower or washed up and getting dressed in the morning, or is that still clicking through fine for you? Uh, it's still fine for me. It just that I will take a longer time to, ah. to get ready to leave the house. You know, no, it is no longer like, you know, like I'm tap, 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 you just go like this, zoom across, you know, now it, it will take a while because I will forget that, oh, I know to do this. I have to go back again and then and by the time I arrive at that, let's say if I forgotten to 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 what you call put on my, my hairpin and things like that, I want to go back to my dresser and try to uh, on my table there, and I stand there and say, okay, what am I supposed to do? Mm-hmm. I know I come in to try to look for something, but then mm-hmm. by the time I arrive there, most of the time is I cannot remember what what is it that I'm looking for. So so sometimes I would say that let's say if I forgotten. I, I need my hair pin. So I will keep on touching my hair. And <laughs> so you are, you, right there. <laughs> yeah. And you remind me, um, who is it? Someone else that lives with dementia talks about saying it, saying it the whole time. Hair piece, yeah. hair piece, hair piece, hair piece. Yeah. Every time they're walking, the whole time they're walking, they do an audio to themselves yeah. of I'm going for the hair piece, the hair piece, the hair piece, the hair piece, the hair piece. Mm-hmm. So when they get there, I'm looking for the hair piece, the hair piece, because then they scan, visually scan, looking for the item. And yes. for some people, you were talking about giving yourself a motor cue by putting your mm-hmm. hand, a sensory cue, and she does an <laughs> audio cue. But what yeah. you're telling me is you are compensating. You're doing this compensatory strategy. Mm-hmm. Um 
and what I'm going to ask you is now, by the time you get out the door to go somewhere, how much energy have you had to use compared to how much energy you used to have to use to do that? Oh, now is, you know, um, I would say that, let's say if last time I only used 5% of my energy to get dressed up and exit, now I think by the time I exit, I will use quite a lot of my energy, maybe 20%. Wow. And then, uh, and then when you go out, you need to lock the door and, and, and things like that, and again, and 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 put on your tools and uh, and really go and put, because I stay in uh, in an apartment, so we we have to use the lift and and things like that. I tell you, by the time the whole thing goes down and I reach to the ground floor, it is just like it's it's so exhausting. Yeah, so and- so. So I normally will, will do it in such a way that unless I have I have very good reason that I need to go out, I will make sure that I get all the things that I want to do in one whole one step. <laughs> there you go. Yes, yes. Yeah. <laughs> and so I think um, this is that tricky place where people go, well, she looks great. And it's like, do you know what it takes? And so... The idea that you may not be able to stay as long, do as much, be quite as vibrant, because Mm. it took so much more than it used to take to do this. And and then there's that, you know, do you ever get the niggle? Like, I know for me, it used to be, did I leave the iron on? I think I turned it off. Did I turn it off? Uh, I did. I I can't remember. And then that that worry about Mm. did I or didn't I, did I or didn't I? And it's distracting. It can be really distracting. And to have a way to check on that. So I'm curious, do you use use technology at all, Emily, to deal with life? Oh, yes. My my, this phone is like my my everything. (laughs) It is, it's, Luckily, I tell you, is uh, this uh, non that technology is now around to make life so much easier and more manageable. Mm-hmm. Or else, I I think living with dementia, I couldn't imagine those people you know, back in those days without all this technology. Life must be very very difficult for them. Yeah. You know, now with this is so much easier. Uh, I I. Like for example, because I still use public transport, I move on my go out and do my advocacy work all by myself. Yeah. So so then uh, with 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 this kind of thing with the app, you know, it tells me what bus to take, and then after that, uh, uh the 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 route, and then you know, you yeah, you can yeah. keep on checking. Uh, am I on the right right track or not? Yeah. You know, <laughs> I mean. when do am I supposed to press the button? Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, do you do? Does your daughter participate in in helping you set things up, or how do you? So that's support. Finding a person who understands mm-hmm. technology, but also understands your ability and your disability. So, what would be helpful and what is not helpful on on a device, and how to have? I mean, I'm wondering would a would a system that like said to you like Alexa or whatever it is says to mm-hmm. you. Uh, Emily, oh, you may want to lock the door before you leave as as it notices you're closing the door and the lock is not happening. And and it says, oh, Emily, lock the door before you go. Yes, I I, am very uh, especially now with the uh, people all work from home due to the COVID situation in Singapore. I'm very blessed that. They are all working from my 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 younger daughter. Ah. The, the elder daughter, no, like she has to work in the hospital. But the younger daughter, she she work at home, so she will be the one who keep an eye on me. And now because now, uh, we have been for so long since COVID. We already every time whenever we exit our main door, we need to wear put on our oh, mask. Yeah, and home I home. can never remember. And then yeah. every I can be all say, I'm ready to go out already. And then she will always say that, Mom, mask. <laughs> yep, that's it. All she has to do is give you a visual cue, yes. and your brain goes, "Oh yeah, yeah mask, yeah." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so yeah, and, and in terms of uh, technology, uh, she's the one who uh, okay who, 
guide me how to do it and then uh, and 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 i'm so happy that you know she will have let's say even if she were to download an app for me and she will make sure that only the relevant one step say and the one that is you know sometimes the app comes with too many oh. things that is not uh, no of no use <laughs> to yeah me. it's not what they you need it's just, not why you were doing yes. it. yeah yeah yeah, yeah, cool. yeah so 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 that is um having a, a person who really understand what you what kind of support you need and at what level of support that you need that is very important that's really important yeah so so what I'm so we're we're gonna bring this to a close not because I don't mm. love talking to you Emily because <laughs> you're just it's so fun to talk to someone who gets the idea of disability from the other side. I mean, so we're talking about mm. you're on one side of this street, sort of. I mean, I'm on this other yeah. side, as far as we know. But what, what, what we've got is we've got a person that doesn't have dementia, but sort of really does get the idea of disability and support. And my background is occupational therapy. So mine is like, you know, so the what do you want to do? What do you like to do? What do you need to do? And how do we mm -hmm. make that happen? Environmental changes or task changes or expectation changes. So you can still be successful. Um, yeah. And for you, it's, it's my life and I'm trying to figure out how to do it. But then you're just like, you've always been a, someone who helps others. You're also holding the door open and say, come on, come join us because we don't need to stand in shadows. We don't need to give up our life. We don't mm. need people telling us what we can or can't do. We need to discover day by day or even hour by hour, what am I capable of and where do I need some support? And what I'm, what I think I hear you saying, what I'm really looking for is somebody that when I raise my hand goes, yeah, how could I support you? Not is your hand up again? I told you this was too hard for you. I mean, yes. it's like, <laughs> I told you, go by yourself. Just don't do this stuff. And sort of not allowing yourself to become the, the lost cause that mm. people talk about when they talk about dementia. And as this condition changes and changes and changes, I believe people should always be involved in this process of do you want to pick up the spoon and try to bring it to your mouth on your own? Or is it okay if I put my hand under and do some support and guidance so your brain recognizes, oh, a bite of food, I got it. Oh, now I got it. Here's how we do that. Yes. Which is to me very different than open your mouth, Emily. Mm -mm. Open, open. Because that's that same thing of I know better than you do when mm. all you couldn't figure out how to do was what's the sequence of events of lifting the spoon from the tabletop, putting it in my hand, scooping the food and then realizing what I do next. Oh, bring it to my mouth. Oh, Correct. No. you know, mm. so for me, it doesn't stop when someone's just in early state of dementia. I mean, it can happen anywhere along this journey of dementia that I need yes. to listen to you and offer you and see what you have to do with it. I mean, it's not my job to say, here, Emily, this is what we're doing. But instead, so Emily, how about we try something? Yeah. It's just, uh, we just need uh, people to be open and then uh, uh, they themselves also need to be uh, wanting to take the risk. The care partner need to learn how to take risk, you know, and uh, not bubble wrap their loved one living with dementia. And uh, and then uh, if it's, things doesn't turn out the way it is, it is okay. And another thing that is very important is that uh, they cannot set the expectation like when the person is connectively just like last time, you see. It is a new level altogether. It's a new bar that we are setting every day because, you know, we cannot stop what is changing in, yep. inside the brain and, and decline and things like that. So our bar will keep on, you know, keep, keep on changing. So you cannot say, okay, you must do to that. Like, you know, last time you are able to do this or you yes. must do it. Or you have to do it oh, to my expectation. Yes. You know? So that is something that I have been trying to, you know, in my advocacy, working with care partners, that is what I'm trying to get them to understand. Me too, Emily. 
Yes. People and, are in a I, gem state. They're, they're in a brain state and it can change from second to second, depending on what I do and what they're doing and where they are and what's happening. And you know what? That's true about people without dementia too. So yeah. you know, like, holy moly, guys, we aren't as different as you guys tend to think we are. You know, it's <laughs> like, we are so similar. There's no line in the sand. It's just sometimes one of us is more able in this area than somebody else is. I mean, your capacity for thinking about sequence when you can't sequence is pretty amazing. Yeah. <laughs> I wish I had more people in my world that were that good at really being open to, okay, crossing the midline makes a difference. All right, yeah. I'm going to start setting. I mean, it's like <laughs> that cha-ching when the penny drops and your brain goes and when it does at work you go oh shoot you probably wouldn't say mm -hmm. you probably have a word just like I do when I'm frustrated <laughs> you know where I might yeah. say, okay that didn't work like it did last time what am I going to do now okay well this time what I'm going to say is can you chop this for me so I can keep going with what I want to do which is cook the meal um, you know I'm not going to let you do this every time it's not like I want to give it up it's just like this time I know that we need to get it done and I'm running out of energy. How mm. about you do it this time? It doesn't mean like I'm giving this up forever. And I'm saying from now on, I won't be able to do this. I'm just saying in this moment, yeah, I want to pick which one I do and I want to fix the mm. meal. You chop the vegetable if you can, and then we'll finish this thing together. But it's, I want to choose. Yeah. Now, 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 now is uh like what I said because my my younger girl is working from home, so she has more flexibility, and uh, so so now cutting of the vegetables and things like that, she is in charge of cutting, and I just tell her, okay, she will ask me, mom, how do you want the chicken to be cut? Because I'm the one who cook. So yeah. I said, oh, I want it to be like this, I want it to be like that, and she help, and there's a division of work, and by the end of the day, after I put the dinner, I'm not so tired. You know, yeah. because uh, it's, it's, it is it is very level intensive. Yes. <laughs> I, mean, I, wanna, I actually want to come eat with you. Unfortunately, we have a time difference. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, and, 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 wow. Yeah. And, and one thing I liked about uh, now from, from, from uh, your post, uh, post, uh, positive care is that uh, the, the under the hand technique, and I find that is very, very empowering because the person whom you are supporting actually don't see that they are being supported. That's right. It's just like because your hand is under, you know, and then you are guiding. What the person see is just his or her hand. And they feel you know? it. And yeah, yeah, exactly. They, it's they like actually feel the material, the, the material or the spoon or the sweater that you are trying to help the person to wear. And at the end of the day, the person say, "Oh my God, I do it by it myself." Is. And it's that like, you did, done. you surely yeah. did. And, and what I get as a care partner is I'm not getting resistance because if I acknowledge the person gets it, it's like, it's just, I'm helping the brain start the ignition key. All I am yeah. is turning, helping turn on the key. That's all that's happening. They're turning the key on. I'm just there to guide it so that they go, Oh, and it's like, yeah, now take it. You got it. And it's like, I don't need to drive the car. All I needed to do is get your hands up on the steering wheel kind of thing. You know, yes. it's, it's that idea. So, oh, Emily, it's been so wonderful spending <laughs> some time with you. I enjoy ch chatting with you. This is very nice conversation. <laughs> yeah. I mean, and it's really rewarding for me because, and this is what you're saying is people living with dementia have these amazing abilities. And you are a person, as an example, just like I am, what our capacity is to be curious about one another, to be willing to listen and learn from one another, and, and really want to be in a community together where we can be a community. I mean, we don't yes. need to shuffle people off to the side and we are capable if we're willing to change. But we've yeah. got to be willing to change status quo because what we're doing to people or with people or around people is just not healthy. It's not healthy for anybody. Um, yes, precisely. So, oh, Emily, I am so glad you agreed to interrupt your evening schedule um, for a morning <laughs> conversation. And I am very hopeful that uh, when we're ready to share this, we might be able mm. to figure out if you can stay on 
even a little later so that you could be part of our TIPA for 10 in the in our morning, your night. I don't know. We'll okay. try it. We'll okay. see. We'll see. We may have to do a very early morning segment for us so that you'll <laughs> be able to be part of it. We'll, we'll, we'll negotiate. But yeah. um, this is a phenomenal segment of Courageous Conversations. And thank you, Emily Ong, for what you do. Yeah. Thank you also. I also, uh, I mean, since I get a chance to speak to you personally, I want to thank you also for last year. Uh, uh, you you let me to join the uh, join the conference that you people have. Yeah, and that was an eye opener for me. I get to know so many people and uh, the topics and things like that. So yeah, I never have a chance to personally thank you. So I want to thank you now. Thank you very oh, much. You are oh, in in my language called Cecilia. <laughs> and Cecia. Cecia, is that right? Cecia? Cecia. 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 Uh, Cecia. Oh, you can say, yeah, Cecia means thank you. <laughs> Cecia. Cecia. Okay, so what I'm going to say is, Emily, actually, Cecia, Cecia to you, because <laughs> I've got to say, uh, by bringing people together and learning from one another, we've all been enriched. And, and that worldwide community, we're a worldwide community. The boundaries mm-hmm. just are not there for us because there are other boundaries we're working on. And so, yes. you know, um, I am very hopeful you'll come again this year and that we'll join again this year together uh, because we're going to do it virtually again this year just to be safe. We don't know where COVID will be around the world, but we know we want to bring people together. And, um, yeah. we're, and I really want you to join me in, in some of the sessions and we may have to pre-record them because of time zone issues. <laughs> Um, yes, you yes. have so much to share and offer that um, what a what a gift you have. So thank you. Hey, folks, thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe to help us spread Teach's positive approach message around the world. And don't forget to click the bell to get notified when new videos are posted.